Take some Dawson. Lovely to chat with you again. Thank you. Um, yes, I am recording. How is a tree selected to be carved into a bowl? Well, it is kind of a spiritual experience at first. They, they would come into the forest like we are here and they would select a tree. Maybe the grandfathers were put it aside because it had no branches or this will make a good canoe. These, this tree will be used um, for lumber to make houses. And certain trees were selected for um, poles. And, um, and they would monitor it just the same way the logging companies, they come and put ribbons around things and keep an eye on them. Well, that was been done here for thousands of years. They would, they would know where certain trees were and for what purpose. And um, if you, then they would fall it, so it would be close to a water source to tow it. And um, but our tree in particularly had an interesting, um, interesting history of. I guess it was uh, 800 years old, and. Um, it had came down in the wind and it was on the side of a mountain that kept it from um, people looking for firewood, from people looking for shake blocks, it, from, it, just, it was just out of reach to everyone, but the elders knew about it. And um, somebody had said, one of the elders came and they said, you know, 800 years ago, when that tree was just a bud, our Creator knew what was going to happen to that tree, who was going to be around when it was time to carve it. 800 years ago, that was way before contact. So the horrific experiences we all went through at contact was already factored in by our Creator, I believe. And the people that is working on the pole now were selected because it become a spiritual journey now. And, um, and it was protected because it had trees on it that was growing from the log that was on the side of the hill that were 70 or 80 years old. So that's why we, that's why we're treating it as a quest or a spiritual experience because it was preordained before contact even and that we would still have a voice because we had lost everything. And the language was one of the things that we could call our own. And, and we have an opportunity through the United Nations to recognize the loss and the revitalization of na indigenous languages. That's why the poll came into being was um, it's the year of indigenous language, and our goal is to carve a pole from uh, through my friend Tim Paul, the master carver, and the story comes from his family, from his tribe, but it is their worldview, but it's shared by just about every nation in Canada about um, nature, respecting nature, um, working. Um, with the natural elements from the land to the sea to the lakes to the streams to the mountains to um, to the skies to the moon to the sun and even beyond sun we were aware of and we we have we were so disconnected when contact came nine out of ten of us died through um, diseases and whatnot. 
and a lot of that knowledge was lost. And uh, and then the ten percent that survived were thrown into the residential school experience. And just about everybody on that poll is directly or indirectly affected by the schools. And um, we're doing it for our ancestors that didn't know what was going to happen. I was thinking about that today. Um, all the place names of not only here, about Alberni, Alberni Inlet, Barclay Sound, the Strait of Juan de Fuca, Malaspina Strait, Queen Charlotte Strait, Vancouver Island, Vancouver, Victoria, British Columbia. Whose ancestors are there? Who was here for thousands of years? So the language was uh, uh, taking a little bit power back or taking a little bit, not to prove anything, not to be militant, but just to say to our children, we had our own names, we had people in place, we had our we had a different outlook and we got disconnected through contact and through colonization, through the residential experience. But in this poll, all of the things that we, that our ancestors revered and respected are all connected on the pole from the, from the, the, the land is represented by a grizzly bear who has a um, sea chief. If you look out where we're carving the pole, the land and the, the sea are close together, just like on the pole. And then um, it even describes things that right above those two elements are two supernatural being dwarfs that are holding a drum and when those drums when they beat those drums that's when the earthquake comes and sometimes man thinks that we're in full control of the planet and but we all get humbled really quick when they beat those drums and we're living on the fault here so is how to, and so full of ourselves as we get, we can be humbled really quick. So there's things, elements of that pull intellectually that that go beyond um, art. It's storytelling. Um, we had we had didn't have a written language. We had an oral language. They had storytellers that would tell you the story. And to have a pole standing like that, it would just enhance the narrative. You start from the, the base of the pole and you work your way up. And um, it would just help the storyteller to remember. They used to spend days telling a story. And those stories get um, interpreted through song and dance because the culture here and the culture that I come from, um, our stories are dramatization. They're, um, they're a reenactment of something that actually happened. And that's where our songs and dances come from, is history. And the pole um, crosses the T's and dots the I's of your story. And that's where this pole is a worldview of the new channels, but it's also the worldview of just about every First Nations on North and South America. Stay right there. I'm just going to check this camera. Right. So when you talked about the creator seeing this little sapling and saying in 800 years 
there are going to be carvers that need this coal. Raised the hairs on my arm, stood up. How do you feel to know that, not to believe, but to know that almost a thousand years ago the Creator looked down and said, there will be a man to work on this pole. How do you feel working on it? Oh, it makes me cry. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's a privilege. That's why it's not about money. You know, it's not about funding. If I were to say just about all of us on that pole are residential school survivors, which we all are, and if I were to say to you we're not getting any funding, it would be just like a concentration camp victim forced to sell souvenirs at Auschwitz. That's what it is, the pole, that's how serious it is to us that are working there. Because there was genocide happened and we get somebody to tell our story, just a little fragment of what was lost. That's why we're doing the poll. It doesn't matter who started the poll. It matters who finishes it. You, you've described this as, as such a spiritual experience. I want to know how it feels when you are working on that 800-year-old tree, which is no longer a tree, which is taking shape, which is coming into mm -hmm. being as something else. How do you feel as a carver? I, um, Tim and myself were brought up by the old people. Tim will tell you that. He was brought up with the old stories. I was brought up with the old stories. My parents were both residential school victims. And I come from a hereditary family. And they lost their kids to the schools. The kids' worldview was changed forever. They no longer respected it. They were taught, taught to be ashamed of it. So the old people downloaded all the information onto myself. I thought they were doing it to all the kids, but they weren't. They, they selected a few to carry on and hope that it will be carried on. And Tim was one of those, so was I. So when he asked me, how does it feel? Well, I guess that's what I, that's what I was born to and born to do. And um, to us, it's a, it's a duty and a very spiritual honor to be doing the poll. To, to each one of us, assist each other and help each other because all of us have different strengths on that poll. And um, I don't know if that answered your question. It does. And over the years, Cecil, I've, I've talked to you when you've been working on, on different projects. You are a carver. You are an artist. And I know you've answered this in other ways. But this isn't just another carving, is it? No. It's a statement. It's a validation of who we are because we were told to be ashamed of who we are. And we got um, forcibly removed from who we were and our identities. Like I mentioned, all the place names. We don't recognize them. We don't know whose ancestors those are. But, but I had a point here, it was, um, Repeat the question, because I, I had a good point. <laughs> I might have lost the question. I was so caught up in your answer. You've, you've carved so many things, oh, yeah. but this is different, isn't it? Yeah, this, this one is different because um, we're taking some power back, albeit um, benign power as the world understands it, but we're making a, a statement about who we were to ourselves to reaffirm our place in this universe, to reaffirm that despite all that we went through, the Creator is still taking care of us by the tenderness that He took with that 800-year-old tree. 
And the two that were going to finish the pole were trained um, specially for it. And the supporting cast, which is equally as important, was all in place. So it's not just a pole, it's a, it's, um, it's a monument to not only survival, but we're still here and we're not in museums anymore. And the same people that took that away from us, the same people that imprisoned us, are now telling us to sit down and shut up and heal and reconcile, and which is all and fine, but that takes time. Under each person is different, so it's more or less. The old people would say, especially on the new channels, somebody would land in a a, a boat plant their flag in the beach and say, in the name of the queen, this is now. So in their own little way, we're planting our own flag in the shape of a pole and saying to the generations that's going to follow, this is a gift from my ancestors from back there. And we're still here. And this is going to be a lighthouse, a beacon, hopefully when it's all said and done. And it will it'll create a, a, a tremendous legacy for all those involved, including, you know, people in Port Alberni. Brilliant interview, Cecil. You're, you've given me almost everything because the, the, the specific details of the poll and that story, I'm going to ask Tim to tell much of that. You know that for many people, you talked about you're out of the museums, the poles are out of the museums, but you know that for many people that look upon the pole when it's finished or any of the poles, they'll just see some quaint folk art. They won't understand the language of the pole. Mm -hmm. They won't understand its meaning. Does that matter? I think this, this um, project is educating and, and teaching on many levels, and that's one of them, why you just ask that. People ask me that all the time when I'm demonstrating, and I always use an analogy of um, back before contact, when, when we all had houses and we all had villages, and a young, young person said, I'm gonna go see our relatives in that distant village over there, but how can I tell? I've never met them. I just heard stories and I know that we're connected to them. And then the, el and, and then the grandfather would say, well, you go land on their beach and you look at the houses. You know what our crests are. You look at the houses and then you look at the pole and these images should be on there because that's our identity. That is who you're related to. And that's, and that's what's going on about, it's not just an object in the museum, it's, it's something a lot more. When you talk about, again, back to we're no longer in the museums, when you talk about what was taken away, um, not just at contact, but during the whole residential school era, and, and continuing today, what continues to be taken away today, it seems to me, and maybe I'm wrong, and, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong, it seems to me that this poll, and perhaps every poll is undertaken with a serious intent really is just saying to hell with you we are here well uh, the case in point is I had the potlatch about a month ago and um, 
We had gotten some masks back in bowls from the University of British Columbia. Some of them were 400 years old. We had masks that came back from, that was last used in 1910 by my grandfather. And they were done by our, our great artist of the time, my great, great uncles and the University of British Columbia brought them for us to show. I didn't know what to do with them being the head of the family. I said, let's, um, in between our break, the lunch break or supper break, let's put these all on a table so people can look at it. Our first inclination was to let people know that we have a history, we have a potlatch history. We're not just um, start upstarts and wannabes or whatever. And then the three main masks that were there, um, I don't know if you're familiar with our mask, um, the crooked beak, the long ho ho and the raven. Um, we actually put them on the floor and the power that was filled that place when that happened they're going to have to redefine repatriation because they allowed us to do that. They were kind enough to allow us. And what it did for my people, I was crying because I knew that's a Charlie G. Walker's crooked beak. That's a Dick Hawkins ho ho and a raven made by Willie Seaweed on the dance floor. And um, I think it kicked open a door of repatriation, of reconciliation, of they're going to have to redefine it because there was a time when we would go hat in hand to look at our artifacts that were taken. And we would have to go through, put white gloves on and not breathe on them, don't touch them, whatever. And I'm still processing what happened and so are my people. But I think there's gonna be a new era in getting stuff back. And also moving forward like this poll, um, and time will tell. When you talk about um, having to put on white gloves to touch touch things that your ancestors made. That's how we treat dead cultures. That's how we treat cultures that we've dug up in the, in the desert of a people that are long forgotten. Yours isn't a dead culture. Mm -hmm. Yours is a living culture. Mm -hmm. We're still here. We're still here and um, that's what me and Tim talk about. We got to let the people know that we're still here. There are still some of us that were taught the old ways and um, the, the currency that we're dealing with is, is um, honor, integrity, character. It's just how we were taught. We weren't heathens or savages or whatever they claimed us to be. Um, we had a civilization, we had a governance, we had everything. And we might not go back to that, but we're letting the people know, and this poll is going to let people know that it's a little bit more deeper and a little bit more enriched than, than the written, what has been written about us. Cecil, that's a brilliant interview. I know I have everything I need. Is there anything else you need to say? No, I'm fine. Thank you very much for, for uh, listening to our story. Tim, when I spoke with um, Cecil, I to make sure, yeah, I did. When I spoke with Cecil, one of the things he said was that when that when the tree was a sapling, the creator already knew who was going to carve it. He knew you would need a pole, a tree to carve, 
and that it was already decided who the carvers would be. Do you believe that? Oh, certainly, certainly. I think it's one of the things that, uh, you know, when you uh, prepare yourself in life, you know, when, you, uh, when you're ready, you know, to, uh, to accept, you know, that uh, you have that complete understanding of the art of giving, you know, and uh, that's probably the fruit of the teaching that, uh, you know, has been let go a little bit, you know, and uh, when, when, um, when that uh, time we were out looking for windfalls, there was three big windfalls that George, George Newcomb was going to bring us up to have a look up way up the old logging roads. But it rained so much, you know, in that period that the uh, roads washed out. Then it got cold and froze a, a bit. And George said, we'll go have a look at this one, you know. And, uh, you know, it was already getting into December, November. So uh, we had to get going. And, uh, you know, we knew there was going to be a lot of you know, uh, repair work, you know, just looking at what... Uh, you uh, what was there you know, in the way of a you know a huge check and you know rot in the cedar, and uh, you know it was uh, you know, uh, a windfall like that you know is is a, a real gift anyway you know it's uh, so we didn't need to cut one down so that uh, and uh, you know right from you know when that began to grow. You know that uh, you uh, was given you know, uh, by the Creator its task to uh, become. You know what is uh, you uh, to be. You know something something that would uh, pull not only artists and families together, but the community. So uh, so that uh, that very split you know, we had to repair is something that, uh, you know, uh, we need, you know, in, in our lives to, uh, you know, to, uh, to uh, become, you know, uh, involved with the people of the community here, you know, I think that's, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's important. And, and, the, and the beginning of that, I think, is, uh, you know, with, with Nigel coming down, you know, with Rennie, you know, being there, you know, you know, with pe people of the community, and and I guess if we uh, if we pay attention to who we are, you know, we would quickly begin, you know, to acknowledge those people. You know, it's it's you know how mipnish yakish hatwil ichma icham datna kwakuts kwakuts and ma islam people of the community. So uh, you know that uh, you know, uh, cedar you know, has become part of what we had to repair as to what it uh, was in, intended for, I suppose, in, in the way of uh, you are looking at uh, you uh, saving what we have left of the language. And uh, let's not be afraid of change. The language is going to change in, in mine, mine, you know, language that I have, you know, as a 10, 11 year old you know, isn't necessarily, you know, how Uncle Mo, you know, would, would say. It's, you know, what I say, you know, is, is oftentimes very different, but I, I, I understand what he, you know, what he say. But we need to uh, accept change. If we don't accept change, then we can talk about losing. And uh, so, so that was, uh, that cedar intended for us to pull together not only as artists but as a community to uh, to repair and, uh, and and look at what people you know may always talk about for years to come reconciliation you know and uh, you know we we begin repairing and pulling that together you know so that's the uh, but the key to to all of that was the uh, you know when when we looked at uh, that cedar out there you know it's the uh, you know, I had sat with my mother before I went out there, you know, we, we look at a cedar, you know, we treat it as our relative, we're okhyo, we're related to nature. That cedar, in laying there, 
we take as our coach move, our sister. But when we begin to, to finish it, you know, and it becomes alive and we can talk to it. And when we're ready to put it up and erect it, you know, that becomes our grandparent, you know, that becomes, you know, Nana uh, you know, that becomes, you know, like my grandmother, Chi holding something of importance. So, uh, so that cedar, you know, holds for us, you know, the, the tie that we want to mend, you know, with not only our people, you know, and pull together, you know, the, you know, the very people that have uh, the feeling, you know, of, of uh, always giving and offering good feeling and goodwill, you know, to, uh, to the people that we live around and the people that we work with. So as artists, you know, you know and, and, and Cecil, you can't take anything away from him. Neither can you take away from Rennie, you know, or Harry, you know, or Stan, you know, or Jeff Cook, you know, or you know, uh, Gerald, you know, those, those people, you know, are you know, uh, giving everything that they have, you know, to, uh, to make sure that we uh, pull together something that's uh, you know, uh, incomplete, you know, uh, you know, necessity as to how we want to deal with ourselves. Tell me about the pole, about your design. That, that, tell me about the pole. The pole, you, uh, we, we look at our ten relatives, you know, from, you, uh, from the sky, the sky, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the moon, the stars, the sun, you, uh, the wind, the mountain, you, the rivers and the lakes, you, the land, the sea, you, the ten relatives that we have in nature, you know, we, uh, we know every part of those, you, relatives of ours are very, very much alive, very, very much, you know, uh, alive as we are. The eleventh being the earthquake, you know, which uh, at times, you know, comes about in our lifetime, maybe not, but in past where, you know, uh, earthquakes, you know, uh, will uh, tend to remind you and I, you know, uh, how very, very small we are in this universe, in this world. You know, we, we, we quickly begin to uh, realize when earthquake, you know, comes up, upon us and, and sends us tsunamis and, and floods and, and, and on and on that, uh, that uh, you know, we we got to be reminded of our place in this universe, and we are the very, very smallest. So the earthquake is a, is a very important part of what what this is is about. That uh, you know, we want to look at uh, you know, sort of going back and reaching back and pulling what used to be in place for our people as a you know, as a, you know, uh, cultural teaching and uh, you know, family history that. Uh, that we abide. Let's let's look at abiding by and taking back a little bit of what uh, what was uh, you know the the strict law of nature and never condemn anything to extinction. That's what earthquake is all about. Quickly, quickly remind us, you know, of uh, of our place in this world. For Cecil, I'm going to ask. I don't know if I want to ask this this way. I know there were politics swirling around the, the inception of the pool. I don't want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, a, that's a different story. But it seems to me that all poles are spiritual and political in nature because they make a statement. And this poll seems to me is making a statement that you are here just like the mountains and the sun and the stars. You are here, you've survived, your language is surviving. It's changing as all of nature is changing all the time, but it's here. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? That's, that's correct, you know, I think that's the, uh, you know, that's you know, in brief a summary of what, uh, what's taking place in the uh, creation, you know, of what, uh, you know, what is uh, 
you know, our grandparent. You know, we refer to the a pole like this as our grandparent, our grandparents, nananixo, nanixo, you know. And this one here, we especially want to pay attention to the to the ladies, you know, the uh, you know the grandmother, you know the. Uh, the holder of, of, of uh, really so much in our lives, you know, in, in passing on and making sure that we had had a good upbringing. But the reverence that we have for uh, you, uh, you, uh, the cedar to begin with, but once we complete and once we uh, you instill, you know, our feeling and our goodwill, and uh, you, uh, you, our, our spirit goes into into that pole. Here, here's here's the. Uh, the key to that, when Uncle Mo was here, as my grand uncle, the younger brother of my grandfather, you know, working with me, you know, he would always sit with me until I got to a stage, you know, in what I was uh, creating. And I'm near finished now. He'd say, Timmer, you're near finished now. It's alive. You can speak to it, so I'm going to go in. I'll go inside. So you bring it to life, you know, with uh, your cultural teaching, family history, strictly family history, your names and songs, to Ikhmut, the beginning of time for our people. So it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it's uh, important. So it's the, uh, to understand that, uh, you know, uh, you work with uh, your people that have your, uh, an understanding of that, you know, and uh, and Cecil is one of them, you know, that we can talk about, you know, uh, you know, we can talk about Haitna, we can talk about, you know, Yumukwanul, uh, Nupitul, you know, things that come from other parts of the universe, the skies, you know, and uh, you know, Haitna being a crystal, you know, Mukwanul being a, a massive, you know, uh, destructive weapon. Nupit Ulf, you know, you, uh, you know, a huge paddle that when you and I think about that, we want to get across the bay one stroke, we're there. Haitna is a real means of travel that you and I think about where we want to go instantly, we're there. So we have, you know, that connection, you know, is, is why we, you know, to, to the skies. We had a special race of people out there left that for us, you know, and uh, you know that's uh, that's something that uh, you uh, you know was uh, referred and and, and uh, you uh, pointed out to me by uh, a cab driver, you uh, you uh, Hindu cab driver, you know, going to UBC, and he asked what I was going to do, and he said, well, lecture or slideshow or what? I said, bit of both. His sort of reaction quickly was, you know, we got a written language and we were at war with spaceships. I said, I know that because, I, you know, I've been told about that and I, I know of your written history. We have similar and we have these, Haitna, Mokwanar, Nupit, He said, do you still have names for those? He said, we don't. So, uh, so what I have in the in, in, in part of the language is, uh, you know, some of what was uh, given to me by by uh, elders and and, and, and uh, my grandparents. You know, uh, uh, you know, I moved up here with with my wife and family, you know, 29 years ago. You know, to really reconnect with family up up here, you know, and and especially especially ladies. You know that really had strong, strong history. So, so uh, you, uh, I think one one to note, one should note that uh, you, uh, you uh, spirituality. I think is uh, you uh, you can only talk about it only if you've been there. You know that's part of what uh, what uh, is uh, part of what uh, Cecil and I and what uh, what's happening down at that pole. You know we're instilling grandparents, ancestors, you know, you know, so it's the, uh, so that's what's happening. I'm going to let some yep. folks go by yep. this time. Yep. Where were we? <laughs> <laughs> so that's really the essence of my job, you know, as, as, a, as, a, as a carver, is to 
bring it to life with, with uh, history and bring it to life with uh, the ancestors, you know, that's the... Uh, how, how do you know? I mean, this poll is about language, year, year of Indigenous languages, to mark that. How did you know what the design would be? Was, is this your design or is this the creator's design or is this your, where does it come from? It comes from, it comes from uh, grandparents, it comes from ancestors, you know, you uh, gone before us, you know, Aumit uh, ancestors gone before us to, to the great beyond, Hilsuis. You know, the, uh, you know, I think it's, it really, you yeah, know, there comes a time in your life when uh, sometimes you, you don't choose, I don't choose what Tim Paul wants to do you know, for our people, for our families, for our children, grandchildren, for the language. You know, that comes from, the inspiration comes from the, uh, the people sitting at home in Hilsuis, in that big house in the sky that, that come and give us the real inspiration to, uh, to go way back, to look at uh, the beginning of time for us, as, as, as we know, as we know, ikhmut, the beginning of time, you know, for us, you know, that uh, it's, it's, it's necessary now to bring that, you know, to, uh, to the attention of, of language, you know, that, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, uh, the great, uh, you, know, the, you know, the skies and the stars, you know, and we have people coming into forests like this, you know, in New Vic, where lawyers will, you know, uh, professors and instructors take uh, their, you know, upcoming lawyers into the forest, into the woods to, to, uh, to uh, teach and be in the, so my response to that was, you know, if this goes up in New Vic, where, where hopefully it will, you know, is that you take your students here to look at this pole you know, and you begin to understand, you know, that, uh, that we have ten relatives that, uh, you know, and, and that's universal, you know, everybody, you know, had that understanding that uh, if you take care of your little plot of land, it'll reap for you, it'll be good to you, you know, but if you don't, you know, nothing will grow, nothing will come back, nothing will be there for you, you know, if you uh, condemn that to extinction, you know, you don't have anything, so this is the time you know, uh, so the inspiration comes from, you know, grandparents and, and uh, ancestors long gone before us. It's, a, uh, it's what, what you, uh, you know, what you uh, pray for, you know, in the morning, you know. And, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, that very thing that, that you ask for, you know, when you say, ka a ka a give me, ka a ka a na chi si 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 u is you want to say the right things and you want to say good things you know to uh, you uh, make sure that uh, that you have a good day and you leave something you know for uh, you uh, for people that you uh, that you work around and that that you live in you know uh, uh, in around you know so it's the uh, so we, uh, you know, we need that sort of, you know, uh, time, you know, to, to always make sure that, uh, that we, uh, we give, we give back, you know, that's, that's what this is about, you know, it's the, and, and, uh, and as I said earlier, you know, I've listened so much to my, my granduncle Mo Smith, he's actually my grandfather, but I grew up with everybody calling him Uncle Mo, so I just, Uncle Mo all my life, so. So I listened to him when he's, you know, he was a great one for sitting me down and, you know, uh, we got to go through this again, we got to rehash, you know. And when I listen to him, I don't say how he says it. So, but one of the things he always said was that, look, if you don't adapt, if you don't accept change, okay, then we're going to lose. We can talk about losing if you don't accept change, you know, and we have to, you know, because Everything's changed around us, you know. The language changes, you know. It always has, you know, throughout time, you know. So that's the, uh, so, uh, you know, hopefully we can, uh, you know, uh, 
you know, finish the project with a good feeling, goodwill. You know, that's that's what it's about, and then we have that with the with the crew down there. You know. Does it matter that that there will be so much? Like this pole is powerful. It speaks. It will come to life. And yet, not everybody will understand what it's saying. Is that okay? Is that just part of it? That's that's okay because it's you know you you, you don't give uh, people you know that uh, you know I, I certainly wouldn't want to if I was learning. I wouldn't want the whole loaf of bread at once. I'd want to be given a piece at a time, a crumb at a time, over time, so I so I I can absorb, I can learn. And that's what's going to happen to this here. It's the, uh, you know, the pole, you know, is, uh, you know, everybody knows nature. Everybody knows the sky. They see the sea. They see the land. They see your lakes and rivers, you know, and it's the, um, so uh, learning is a lifelong process. It's like, you know, people will ask me, you know, do I, do I call you Master Carver? I said, no, not really, because, you know, my understanding of, uh, of uh, people that are moving up in uh, you uh, 69 70 years old maybe you know you, you look at uh, you, you you look at uh, you uh, people coming and saying oh you're an elder now okay okay my my definition of an elder is a person who never wants to stop learning so that's the uh, that's that's the purpose of the poll too it's it's got to be there for a number of years you know, and uh, you know, people will will certainly grasp. You know, you uh, some maybe some will grasp all of it, but at least it's out there. And, and uh, you know, it's the uh, you know we we need to continue to pick the conscience of you uh, people of BC and the people of Canada, and, and and especially maybe politicians. You know, we won't change things, you know, and we'll never learn. You all at once, you know. As they say, it's it's that little piece, that little crumb at a time that'll that'll make uh, give an understanding of what what that pole is all about. Tim, I think I have almost everything I need. When the pole is almost finished, like your uncle Mo told you, you'll speak to the pole mm -hmm. to bring it to life. Can you tell me what you will say, or is that is that private? No, I think I think probably what I do is call my my relative, you know, uh, you uh, you know Linus, you know, to uh, you uh, do what we need to do to bring you know that to life, you know, and it was uh, you know once it really comes to life and when when it comes up, you know, it's the uh, you know you know when when you start bringing it up, you know, you know the. Uh, the, the songs, you know, come out, you know, that's uh, when that'll really, really come to life when it's standing straight up and maybe looking a little to the east where the sun comes and life comes from, you know, so that's... Is there anything you want to say about all of this that I haven't asked you? Well, I think, you know, if uh, as an artist, as a carver, in, in my in my whole entire career, if I hadn't had a backbone, I wouldn't be this far, I wouldn't be here in this life. And that backbone, my wife Monica. Thank you. <laughs>